Hello and welcome to this electrical principles training video. In this video, we're going to be... Joe. We're going to be... Students will love that in the bin. Okay. What a waste, you need to have a word with them. Okay. You won't shoot in the video, will you? I was shooting in the video, but you're here now. So, uh, welcome Gary Hayes of GSH Electrical. Okay. Okay, so if we're on video, let's challenge you. Okay. Tell me how long that cable is. Uh, okay, I've got a tape. Nope. 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 Use your clever maths. My clever maths. Your clever maths. Okay. Well, I think maths is clever in general. Okay. But your yep. clever maths. My clever maths. To work out the length, please, of that cable, and then we can see if we can prove your clever maths is correct or not correct. Okay. All right. I like the sound of that. Um, so there's a few things we need to know about the conductor before we start doing this. I'll get it out of the bin. Okay. Cool. Is that I'll what need you need to, to know? That's not what I need to okay. know. What I need to know is uh, what is the cross section area of the cable? It's 1.5 millimeter squared, Joe. Okay. Uh, and is it a copper cable? It is, yeah, copper material. So we'll need the resistivity of copper, which is 17.2 micromillimeters. It is. And I'll also need to know, so I know the resistivity, I know the area, uh, I'll need to know the resistance of okay. the conductor. So, okay, if I use this? Yeah, yeah, I've got my so, uh, so see if we can work out MFT the... ready to go. Okay, let's work out the resistance of this. Yep. Okay. And we have got fluctuating between 18, oh, it keeps oh, knocked it again. Okay. Okay, so let's just give these a little squeeze. Between 18 and one, oh, we've got yeah, two. It's, it's gone between 0.18 and 0.2. So should we go with 0.19? Just try that let's once see if more. we can get that. Just knocked it. Get an accurate reading. Yeah. So it's coming out at 0.19. Yeah. 0.19 after I've fudged around with it there okay. and knocked it over and all the rest of it. So we are at 0 0.19 of an ohm, Joe. Yeah, okay. okay. Right, I think we can do this then. So if I take that resistance of 0.19 and then I times that by the cross section. It's a lot of numbers. Right, so we're coming out with, we should get about 16 and a half meters of cable. So, so you, you think 16 and a half meters here with your clever maths? Approximately, yeah, 16 and a half somewhere in that area. Okay, so shall we measure it out? We've, yep. got, the, we've got the meter stick there, shall we use that? Uh, I think you'll find that we've got two pieces of tape conveniently positioned with one meter gap for well, some reason. Well, that handy? <laughs> it's okay. just a coincidence. <laughs> oh, we, we? we often leave the perfect, uh, I wouldn't suggest it was uh, an SI one meter there, but it's two bits of tape that it's, are one yeah, meter apart. It's one meter apart, it's, it's good enough for right. our purposes. So we know what's going to happen now, this is going to yep. get coiled up to the biggest mess on the planet. Yep. I am going to attempt to uncoil this, hopefully, while you count me, Joe. Okay. And it's not looking good for the start, is right. it? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you... Uh, yeah. we, are we anywhere near? Why don't you uncoil it okay. and I'll measure it, yeah? So, okay. Shall we try starting the other end, maybe? Yep, let's try it the other end. Let's, let's the do other that. End. You know when you're falling out of a window and you have a yep. chance to throw a drummer cable through that window, yep. and you know when you're pulling it in normally, yep. it'll catch a chair leg, yep. it'll bring toys, get the cat it? Round yep, it. Yep. absolutely. Yep. You fall out of a window, you perfectly throw a drummer cable through the window, it catch nothing. catches nothing. You, you'd yep. be laying on the floor yep. still with a drummer cable. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's measure this up. <laughs> right, so, okay. Uh, so we've got there, we've got uh, one meter, and then we've got two. And that is three. And that is four. I, th I think I found the We've perfect job for me. Yeah? Five. Be careful, I lose count. We've got six. That's seven. You're not going to be far off. That's eight. That's nine. That's ten. 11, 12, 13. I think you're going to fluke it. 14, 15. No way. 16, <laughs> so 16 meters. And we were expecting the calculation said 16.5, I think allowing for perhaps not a perfect 17.2. Uh, micro millimeter, maybe not a perfect 1.5 millimeter conductor. And we know this is an absolute perfect, perfect one meter, though, don't we? We know that. It's like I think it's to fair time, to so. say that the math hasn't let us down there. So the really interesting thing, guys, uh, is I can explain to you exactly how I calculated that. Do you want, shall I explain that? Please do. Okay, let's go over to the calculation. So we rose to Gary's challenge. We managed to calculate the length of that conductor with a reasonable degree of accuracy, allowing for lots of tolerances of lots of different things that were involved in that. But let's see how we actually managed to perform that calculation. 
In order to calculate the resistance of a conductor based on its resistivity, length and cross-sectional area, we would do this calculation. And this has been covered in a previous video in this series, so please feel free to have a look at that. We've got rho times by L over A. So that's the calculation that we need to find the resistance of a conductor, R, uh, based on the resistivity of copper times by the length of the conductor and divided by the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So here, R is what we call the subject, but in the calculation that we just did, we wanted to find L, the length of the conductor. And in order to calculate that, what we had to do is we've got to rearrange now or transpose this formula to find the right answer. Now transposition is one of those areas uh, of math that confuses people a little bit, but actually it's really quite straightforward. There's a few rules of thumb that we need to follow. When I sit down to transpose a formula, I look at it and I think, what order would I do this calculation in if I was to put numbers in here? And it's fairly obvious looking at this that we do the top line, rho times L, and then we would divide that by the bottom line, uh, A in this case, the cross-sectional area. Whatever the last thing is that you would do on this calculation, that becomes the first thing that you change when you do the transposition. So here, the last thing that we would do if we were calculating this was uh, divide by A. So the opposite of dividing by A is to multiply by A. So we have to times both sides of this equation, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, by A. So that's quite easy. The left-hand side just becomes R times by A, like that. And that's going to be equal to this right-hand side, which if we look at this, currently we're dividing by A. If we times by A, what we've done is we've actually just completely cancelled out that divide by A, which means that we're left with rho times by L. So there's our new uh, transposed formula. R times A is equal to rho times L. We want to get L by itself. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the opposite of whatever we're doing to L at the moment. Now, it doesn't matter what order we multiply in. So at the minute, we've got L, and we're timesing it by rho. The opposite of timesing by rho is to divide by rho. So if we uh, divide both sides by rho, we end up with R times A over rho, like that. So that's what the left-hand side now looks like. And if we look at what happens on the right-hand side, if we times by rho, and then divide by rho, that cancels out, and we're simply left with L for length. So there we've got uh, our formula. Now, L has indeed become the subject because it's left by itself, but we might look at this formula and think, well, it's, it's the wrong way around. We're used to seeing the subject on the left-hand side. So let's just swap this over. We'll just mirror this. L is equal to RA divided by rho. Hopefully at this point in your studies, you're comfortable with the idea that in algebra, if we've got two letters that are just sitting side by side like that, we know that we need to multiply those two together. That's what that means. So the formula that we're going to use is L equals RA over rho. So now we can start thinking about introducing some numbers into our formula, but there's just a couple of things that we need to be careful about again. Let's just list what we know about our conductor that we were calculating the length of. We measured the resistance of the conductor using the mega multifunction tester, and that came out at 0.19 ohms. So that was the resistance of the conductor. The cross-sectional area of the conductor was 1.5 five millimeters squared. Now the only thing we want to be a little bit careful about here is that, again, hopefully in a previous video, you've seen the explanation as to why this will actually become not 1.5 uh, millimeters squared. We won't put 1.5 in for A. We will put in 1.5 times 10 to the minus six. So that's 1.5 times 10 to the minus six Technically, now that's in the base unit of meters squared. If you're not sure why we've introduced this number now, because this is the number that we're actually going to put into our formula, please go back and watch my previous video on resistance and resistivity calculations in order to get an understanding of why we're going to put this in as 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6. We're then going to look at our value for rho, and this becomes interesting again. 
The material of the conductor was copper, which has a resistivity of 17.2 times 10 to the minus 9 ohm meters. So this is normally expressed as 17.2 micro ohm millimeters. Again, for an explanation as to why this has times 10 to the minus 9 at the end of it, please watch that previous video on resistance and resistivity calculations. So now we've got all of our numbers in place, so we're going to use this number, this number, and this number. We'll put those into the calculation and see what we end up with. So we'll start that again. Uh, we'll just bring this over here now. So we're going to say that the length of the conductor will be equal to the resistance, 0.19, times by the cross-sectional area, which is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6. And then we're going to divide that whole thing by 17.2 times 10 to the minus 9. So that's what we're looking at there. So we can now put this into our calculator and figure out what the length of the cable should have been. So we'll head over here to our Casio FX85 GT Plus, beautiful calculator as it is, and we'll put that in. So again, we can use this lovely fraction button. So if we put that in there, we can just put it in exactly as we've got it on our whiteboard. So we've got 0.19, so there's our resistance, times by the cross-sectional area of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6. So there's our cross-sectional area in the base unit of meters squared now. And we're going to divide that by 17.2 times 10 to the minus 9, like that. So now if we hit the equals button, we should get our answer back. Now it returns the answer in the form of a fraction because that's the simplest way of writing this number down actually. But if we push the SD button there, we can see it actually comes out at 16.569 and so on and so forth. So if we round this off now, we should be looking at about 16.57, so 16.6 meters basically, we can, uh, we can round this off to. 16.6 meters. That's how long our cable should have been. And when we uh, measured it out, we found that it was 16 meters. So we were within sort of 600 millimeters of the uh, of the right answer, which based on the fact that maybe the resistivity of the copper wasn't exactly 17.2, that's the resistivity of pure copper, uh, some tolerances within the cross section area and some tolerances within the uh, measuring equipment that we were using we can see there that actually that is a really, really nice, accurate answer. So we could see there that we had uh, approximately 16 meters of cable on the drum. And of course, we've also got the tolerances of the uh, measuring tape that we used. So we can see from this calculation just how to uh, transpose our formula. So that's a really useful uh, skill to have. And we can also see how I managed to calculate the length of that conductor based on its resistance, its cross-sectional area, and the resistivity of copper. Thank you for watching.